Anyway, there's the pet caterpillar nest, right? And you can see you can see them, right? Right there, moving around. Nasty little buggers. Um, yeah. So anyway, they're, they're definitely. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com. I recently did a podcast with Stefan Subkowiak. He is the uh, subject of the documentary, um, the permaculture. What's it called? The Permaculture Orchard Beyond Organic. It was a 2014 uh, documentary on on maintaining a, a, a fruit tree orchard primarily um, using permaculture approaches. And uh, we had a great talk. And people probably have noticed the uh, videos I've put up on. Uh, YouTube of him answering different viewer questions and people might be annoyed that I'm doing one video per question and uh, the reason I'm doing that uh, there's two reasons uh, number one is that each question is specific and unique to itself so uh, if I were to put it all in one big lump it would be Stefan answers 10 questions and no one would know what the video is about whereas uh, in the case of uh, breaking it up uh, each video is specific to that question. Uh, also, <laughs> when I recorded the interview with him, <clears throat> for whatever reason, my volume was about one quarter his volume. So every single bit of audio I have to, whenever I'm speaking, I have to magnify the volume and whenever he speaks, I have to bring it down. So it's very time consuming to um, make the videos, uh, you know, uh, reasonably uh, audible <laughs> for listening purposes so it's, it's kind of time-consuming so by breaking it up in individual videos it just makes it easier for for me so uh, I apologize for some people if they think it's uh, uh, gratuitous or annoying or whatever but um, we had a really good conversation and for those that are interested in hearing those questions answered by someone with more expertise than me I just figured that was the best way to make it available of course you can listen to the whole thing in one big lump if you go to my podcast maritimegardening.com but I wanted to talk about in this video one thing that we discussed in that video, and that was the issue of tent caterpillars in orchard. Now, I don't have an orchard. I've got four apple trees, <laughs> not an orchard. Four, one, two, three, four, yeah, four apple trees, not an orchard. Um, but I do get tent caterpillars here. Now, his approach is just leave it alone. He's got like a thousand trees. His general approach is just leave it alone and uh, eventually uh, your predator population, no, I'm, I'm, if you want to listen to the whole talk, listen to the podcast, but generally speaking, the broad strokes are just leave it alone, and eventually the predator population will, will catch up, and it'll all work out. And, and also don't have just one kind of tree, have a variety of different kinds of trees. Um, so I was trying to think of how I can make that work in my garden, because I've only got four for apple trees and I, I kind of uh, you know each apple is kind of precious and I, I hate to sacrifice a season uh, while I wait for the predator population to uh, catch up to the uh, herbivore uh, population uh, but I just stumbled I just noticed something the other day and that there was my solution for me right there um, so I had uh, the tree behind me they're, they're, they're gone right now but the tree behind me is a northern spy and I had tent, a couple of branches with tent caterpillars on that tree. Um, so I was like, oh, I don't want to leave them on there. I don't want them to proliferate on my tree. Uh, I, I want that tree to be left alone. Um, but I do, you know, over the long term, want the uh, predator population, probably wasps primarily, uh, also birds, I guess. Uh, the things that eat those things, I want them to like where I am. And I want them to be drawn to my location. Um, so how do I bring them around without sacrificing my tree? And uh, I was just harvesting some um, uh, cucumbers in a different part of my garden. And I noticed, uh, remember my garden is surrounded by a forest. Uh, I've got these trees that surround the garden called uh, uh, choke cherry trees, or I think they might be sand cherry. Anyway, they're like a little red cherry. I'll show you in a couple seconds. And they've got tent caterpillars on them. And I don't care about those trees. I mean, I'm sure you can do stuff with choke cherries. You'll make jam and wine and stuff out of it. Um, but um, I, I just literally don't have the time this year to, to explore that area. Perhaps. I mean, I got probably another, I don't know how many more days those berries have on them. But um, anyway, I noticed tent caterpillars had set up shop uh, on those trees. So I thought, hey, I can just leave them on those trees. And 
may be, uh, and they've got lots of different kinds of wasps around here, and lots of different kinds of birds. So that way, the birds can be drawn to those and make use of them, or the wasps, or what, you know, whatever predators make use of, of tent caterpillars. Uh, there's a food supply for those predators now, and a reason them for, for them to set up shop and stick around and hang around my garden. And, um, and I only really, there was probably three colonies on this apple tree, so uh, my solution is to just take, you know, t take as little of the branch as possible, but basically you go, go to the part of the branch where the colony sort of ends and just cut the branch off and toss it in the woods. <laughs> You know, problem solved sort of thing, because uh, those those caterpillars need food, and they're, they're on the tree because that's where the food is. So they're kind of, I think, as far as I know, they're kind of doomed from that point on. Um, so um, I got rid of those, but they are growing on the tree. So let's let's go have a look at this uh, sand cherry tree. Uh, I keep using the the term sand cherry and choke cherry interchangeably because I really don't know what this tree is. But <laughs> and actually, I noticed uh, there's only a couple. Here's the cherry right there berry or whatever right right there there's there's very few of them left there was uh, hundreds of them just a couple days ago and now they're all gone <laughs> so I guess the birds have been busy out here um, anyway there's the tent caterpillar nest right and you can see you can see them right right there moving around nasty little buggers um, yeah so anyway they're they're definitely there's different stages. Those are, well, these ones are a bit more mature, and these ones are in, immature. Right? Anyway, they 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 don't kill the tree. They just defoliate the tree, and and uh, you know they're not. I don't think they're good for the tree, but they do not kill the tree. They just defoliate it. Um, but if you're trying to grow fruit on a tree, and you, you certainly don't want some sort of massive outbreak in your garden. Uh, but just as an experiment, I thought. I mean, I, I can't control the forest around me anyway, right? <laughs> so uh, why not? Uh, I'm sure there's, I mean, we, we have them in this province, so I'm sure there's other trees where they've set up shop, and uh, I don't have the time or energy to search this entire uh, two acres of land to uh, find ten caterpillars. Uh, I just don't want them on my trees. So I thought this was a pretty passive and simple way to uh, embrace the notion of uh, letting nature take its course and uh, letting the predator population uh, proliferate in a way that uh, I don't have to sacrifice any of my apple trees. <laughs> anyway, just uh, my take on, on a way to deal with that issue. We'll see how it works over the, over the coming years. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, compared to Stefan, I'm a novice when it comes to fruit trees and that sort of thing, but uh, I do love the notion of just having a tree on your property that makes food. Uh, it takes a number of years for them to be uh, uh, productive, but uh, it's definitely worth putting the time and effort into growing fruit trees. If you're going to be somewhere on a permanent basis, uh, I'd plant as many different kinds of fruit trees as you can. Um, anyway, I hope you found that uh, interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe click the bell, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Check out that conversation with Stefan. It's the most recent one if you're listening uh, to this video in August 2019. Um, until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.